Hi, Stephen. Well, good. How are you? Good. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And you're like a pioneer of sci-fi. Uh, what were the challenges with Ready Player One? Well, the challenges was we had to we had to build a world. We had to create an entire world uh, that the characters, the real characters in Ready Player One, enter uh, in order to comp compete for this tremendous prize, this this Easter egg, and we had at ILM, you know, the Industrial Light and Magic, and the other company, Digital Domain, uh, we had to actually create a digital world that would be very compelling for audiences to want to uh, escape to. You also shot The Post recently, how do they, the two films compare? Well, I feel a little bipolar to go from The Post to, to Ready Player One, but I've done it a couple of times in my career, not because I do it on purpose, it's just the way things time out. And, uh, and it's good for me, you know, it was good for Ready Player One that I was able to take a small break and make the post because it brought me back with more objectivity about Ready Player One and vice versa. I think filmmakers, I think our greatest enemy is losing uh, perspective, not being able to see the work while we're still working and getting too close to something. And by doing these two movies so close together, it, it allowed me to see both films uh, with fresh eyes. And you've been quite a pioneer of a lot of iconic films, most of the, like Jurassic Park. How much involvement have you had on the new Jurassic World that's come out? Have you had much well, I'm, involvement? Well, I'm, I'm the executive producer and I worked with uh, Colin Trevorrow and, and Derek, and uh, his writing partner, and I worked with J.A. Bayonne to fashion, you know, the help fashion the story and, and the structure. But, but once J.A. became the director, you know, it's a director's medium, yeah. and he took over and he made a really wonderfully scary movie out of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. That's brilliant. And obviously yeah. Ready Player One as well. You've mentioned that you had some restrictions getting the rights to films, in particular Star Wars. No, no, we didn't. No, we, we, didn't, we weren't restricted from Star Wars. They gave us the rights to Star Wars. We felt jointly that it wasn't good, wasn't right to use the iconic Star Wars characters. Uh, even though the series came out in the 70s and went through the 80s, uh, the series is so present and 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 relevant to today's audiences our movie ready player one takes place in 2045 but the style and the nostalgia is for the 1980s so we there you if you look you'll find some star wars iconic you know vehicles and, and ships in our movie but we decided not to focus on the on han solo or leia or uh, you know or um luke skywalker and over your years as a filmmaker, um, what has been your favorite project that you that you've helmed that you've worked on? I think my favorite project, as sort of as a documentarian, has been my Shoah Foundation, where we've collected the testimonies of over fifty-three thousand Holocaust survivors, and we're also collecting the testimonies right now from other genocides. So that has been the most important project I've ever been involved in. The big thing that's facing filmmakers right now is how do we keep cinema alive? How do we keep people going to the movies and not staying at home? Because television is really the story, the writing, the directing, the performance of television is having a watershed moment in the last decade. And that's more for us to compete with if we really want to get an audience to go see our movies in the dark of a room. So just finally, what's the most unlegend thing that you do? The most unlegend thing I do? Uh, Probably look yeah, at the way I look when I wake up in the morning. Well, you know, it's just yeah. it's bad, but it's just yeah,